So the voice box and the vocal cords is the exact same thing. That's kind of where our uh, voice resonates. It, it's right here. And fossilized vocal cords are really hard to preserve. So we have these ones from Panacosaurus. These were uh, discovered in 2023, 2022, I believe. I think it was 2022. So it's not exactly what everybody thinks vocal cords are. This is extremely rare, so this just doesn't happen very often. But with Parasaurolophus or Parasaurolophus, there's something that we figured out a little bit of a different method of figuring out what they sound like. So this is the skull of Parasaurolophus or Parasaurolophus, and here is where the sound comes from. So I have a diagram, but we'll do this first. So obviously we'll have the air intake through here, and then it follows my head all the way up here and then comes back around out this way to make a sound. And there was a paper done by it in uh, 1997 to figure out what Parasaurolophus probably sounded like. So obviously the skull was a pretty big deal. They figured out that there were these resonating chambers inside of the skull that probably were meant for some sort of trombone-esque sound to come through. And these structures are very close to the human ear. So they speculate that it made some kind of distinctive sound through that crest for socialism. Excuse me. Social socialism. Wow, that was hard. Socialization in order to, you know, pick up on the same sounds as their own species. And that's probably what the crest was for, too, just to recognize the same species. As stated before, vocal cords are very difficult to fossilize, and we don't have any of Parasaurolophus so far, so it may be more likely that the crest was how they made the noise rather than vocal cords. There are actually some birds nowadays that don't have a syrinx. This is a larynx, but um, there are some birds that don't have a syrinx to be able to make noises, so they just use their esophagus and uh, closed mouth vocal vocalization to be able to make noises.